Hey y'all! We have reached almost the midpoint of this crazy fast summer semester and this week we're going to be doing an assignment on influencer marketing. So I have a special treat. We're going to have a guest lecture today from Karen Freeberg, the author of our textbook, social media guru um, and beloved friend of mine. So be sure to watch all the way to the end. You'll need the information that she covers as well as the special treat at the end that I think you're really going to like. All right, Karen. Tell me a little about yourself. Well, um, I'm currently an associate professor at the University of Louisville full-time. I teach strategic communications, so PR, social media crisis, but I also teach at West Virginia in their online program in integrated marketing communications at the graduate level. I um, teach the PR and concepts of strategy class and I love it. And I've been doing it for almost 10 years. So wow. yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So um, when I'm not in the classroom, I do a lot of research. I do a lot of work um, in social media. So I do some consulting opportunities. And over the last couple of years, I've gotten a lot of really great experiences working in influencer marketing, um, which has been a lot of fun. Uh, I love coffee. It's a food group, which if you guys probably read the, the book, you know, you'll see my love for coffee. I'm still waiting on an ambassadorship or influencer campaign with Starbucks, but that's a work in progress. So, <laughs> but that's, yeah, a little bit about me. All right. So obviously the students have read the chapter on mm -hmm. influencer marketing and they've got an assignment that we just talked about that they'll be completing this week. And, um, so just real quick, give us a general landscape of where we are in influencer marketing. You've been doing this for a decade now. So how have things changed? Where are we now? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really evolved very quickly. And so with influencer marketing, I mean, it really, like when I first started working in it, everyone's like, oh, it's a fad. Who are these influencers? They're not as important as traditional media, which is kind of funny now, but it's, it's really becoming a stronghold um, presentation, well, that um, stronghold like specialization within PR marketing. Everyone wants to be in it. Um, employers are looking for individuals who have not only an understanding of how to identify the influencers, but how to work with them, write contracts. And so it's really interesting interesting to kind of see how it's really becoming a more systematic and integrated part of what we're doing. But the current landscape um, has shifted a little bit too. Um, there's been a lot of issues in um, crisis in communications um, with, related to influencers. I mean, you have Logan Paul, who is a case study of who not to work with in a campaign. Uh, you have the Fire Festival, which if you have a chance to, you know, definitely sit down to watch the Hulu or Netflix or both um, their documentaries. It's essential, um, but then there's a lot of fakeness out there. I mean, it's very easy to create the illusion or the artificialness of um, influence on social media without really going in depth in detail with like, are people actually driving change? Are they actually influencing behavior? So in many ways, um, some of these crises have kind of sparked a lot of concerns for the industry. People are really concerned about investing in certain influencers or really identifying who really we need to be working with. Um, so there's been a lot of people that have gotten into trouble um, for their influencer work um, for unethical reasons and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a field that has been kind of in the news for not necessarily the most positive circumstances, but when done right, it's a really powerful tool. And I think that's where we need to have strong ethical, professional, and legal integrated con you know, concepts within influencer marketing. Oh, that's great. We're going to dig into some of those challenges and ethical issues. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, tell me a little bit about the key considerations for developing a strategic communications campaign. Yeah, so, I mean, there's definitely several key things to keep in mind when you're looking at developing a strategic communications campaign. First off is really figuring out what needs to be done or what the current state is. I think without research and kind of figuring out what's been done, what are the major challenges, what's the background, what's the history, how does the brand company um, stand out in terms of their brand voice, like without doing that fundamental analysis, both through primary and secondary research, like you will go in the dark. And the thing that I tell my students is if you don't start with research in a campaign, you're basically driving on the freeway at 100 miles per hour with a blindfold. Like you're just not going to be in good shape. And so that's like the key part to really think about. But then in the book, I, I talked a little bit about the strategy that needs to be both creative but also um, systematic. So you need to balance both the science and art of what strategy can bring to the table for social media. So that's something too where research can be creative but also strategy and innovativeness could also be through research. Um, so those are a couple of things to keep in mind. But also I think with social media, like 
you don't want to rely on ideas that were just done or you want to kind of see how you can push the envelope and that innovative is um, if you try to do strategies that worked in 2013 now that's probably people are going to be like were you living on a rock or something um, you really want to kind of look at how to best communicate your story the how and why we use these platforms so the platforms are going to be of course changing so it's always good to go on the ones that where your audiences are located having communities sharing content but you also want to kind of see is there anything new that we need to kind of experiment around with like I know some brands of and universities have been exper experiencing you know and experimenting a lot with TikTok. I mean that is something that um, who knows if it's going to be something that's going to be part of the main strategy but at least they're kind of experimenting and learning from the experience so that's something to pushing the envelope and saying, okay, how can we evolve and grow? Because either way, you're gonna be learning something. So I wanna encourage you guys in your strategic communication plans, both for your influencer marketing as well as your class project, um, to really kind of be, push the envelope and see how can we push the innovativeness further? Because that's one of the things that a lot of companies and agencies and professionals are looking for is those big ideas. So that's really the key thing that I think would be really important to know as you kind of work on your strategic campaigns. As I love everything you're saying about the art and science and the research and really thinking about the channels um, and particularly the importance of as they apply for a job. We just looked at job applications or job calls last week and found that a lot of folks are looking for influencer marketing. Yes. So, Tying all those things together, what where should they be researching to find what the trends are in yeah. influencer marketing so they can develop more strategic campaigns that, that mm -hmm that are innovative, that maybe don't just use TikTok, but what are the other examples of trends you're seeing? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of resources available, but you know, one of the things that I've learned is to not only follow major accounts and news um, resources and social media for the trends, but I also follow people. So one of my favorite people to follow, especially in influencer marketing, is a journalist called, um, her name is um, Taylor Lawrence. She writes for The Atlantic. I mean, she pretty much has like the pulse of what's going on in influencer marketing. She identifies what's happening, what's trending. And so I look to her as an idea, as someone that really gets it. I also read a lot of the work from Carrie Flynn, who is featured in the book. She's under the um, journalist, um, social media and journalism feature, but she's at Digiday. And so she talks more about how influencer marketing is impacting brands and agencies. So she actually, her recent article um, this week talked about how there's actually an advisory council that's being formed to identify influencer fraud and how much an influencer should be paid. Um, the other resources that I look at to kind of keep in track of the industry are specific platforms and companies that are leading in influencer marketing analysis. So uh, Tracker is one tool that is kind of the industry standard in this industry. They actually have a certification that you can get in influencer marketing, but their white papers and their blogs are just like really detailed and thorough. Um, I look at um, Talkwalker. Talkwalker actually did a whole global report on the state of influencer marketing. And then um, Clear, KL, EAR um, actually did this white paper on how much influencers charge per post per um, platform and by type. So you know with celebrity influencers, they're going to be charging a little bit more than nano influencers. So what you're seeing is that a lot of these companies, a lot of these professionals are all providing resources that if you were able to collect that information and cite them, you have a better understanding and say, okay, what's working? What are the trends? But then you're also able to identify the gaps that, you know, are, have not yet covered. Um, I think one of the things that no one's really talking about is how influence, like how can it, we integrate influencer marketing best practices into our ethical code of conduct? Um, I have not really seen that discussion, but that could be something if you were on the job market, you can say, here's how we would integrate proactive influencer marketing practices that we can do for our agency or company into our current ethical code of contact, or how do we deal with influencers in crisis? How do we integrate that into our crisis plan? So all of those things, if you have that understanding of the landscape and the environment, you will be very remarkable and because you not only know what's going on, but you can apply it and integrate it into current practices. So I'm glad you talked about ethics. That's obviously something that is a, a big challenge on the, in the influencer mm -hmm. landscape. It so is, yeah. what are the big challenges we face from an ethics standpoint? There's a lot of people that have been able to pull a fast one on brands for creating fake influence. I mean, it's very easy to get a million followers. And I think that people are getting called out for creating an, basically an illusion and kind of artificial influence and I feel that once people realize that they've been fooled they're not going to really be 
forgiving. And it's so easy right now to see and detect fake influence. Um, there's one tool that I use and I've had an experience um, with a class client um, last fall. Um, it's called Social Pro. It's for Instagram, but it basically analyzes how many, how, how much percentage of your following is real. And a lot of times influencers have media because they say, oh, I have 100,000 followers on Instagram and I get this reach. And then you realize that 99.9% .9 of their followers are fake. And having those conversations, and we actually had did an influencer campaign for the Breeders Cup and we invited 12 influencers and one wanted compensation and said, I have a reach of 100,000 followers. And we looked at her profile and we did, we integrated into Social Pro and it came back that over half of her followers were fake. And so we had to have that come to reality moment and just, it was an educational experience saying, look, like this is gonna help you. Like if you go forward and market yourself this way, you're gonna lose credibility immediately. It's better to focus on quality of followers versus like fake followers. Um, so that's a big issue from an ethical standpoint. And then also, I mean, you have cases where people and brands have created fake influencers and people have fallen through it. So there's been a lot of, um, lack of education you know in the industry with influencer marketing but i think that's changing very rapidly um you see kellogg's um and a few other like general mills that they're like we're not even going to deal with influencers anymore you know because they've been burned so much and people have paid thousands upon thousands of dollars for posts or placements that really have not driven any revenue so a lot of influencers say, oh, I need a thousand dollars for this Instagram post. And they were able to do that because there was no way of measuring that. But there is now, there are tools that basically say, no, you can charge this much because this is where, like how much this post is worth to in respect to the audience size, the conversions and all of these other metrics. So in ways, you know, that, um, it's important to remember research is your friend. Um, data is your friend because it will help protect you, um, especially from a brand side. Like, I mean, with this influencer that we worked with, they wanted like $500 per Instagram story. Like not just the whole complete story, but like each frame. So if they did, you know, like 10 frames, that would be like hugely a lot. But I mean, the, the metrics did not add up. So we were able to save our client a ton of money using data. So those are just some of the ethical challenges that we see right now. Okay, one last question. Um, the students this week are going to have to identify influencers mm -hmm. for a brand that they love. Mm -hmm. What is, obviously start with research, but where do they start looking? I don't want them to get overwhelmed and stuck because they don't know yeah. where to start. So where's the first step? Um, I think the first step is um, for a class like this, I would actually recommend going to Clear, K-L-E-A-R. You can get a free t like demo for 14 days. Most of those um, enterprise tools allow you to do a quick trial run. I would go there and then um, look at it. If you wanted to look at Adidas, for example, and they're, they're very big in the lifestyle brands. If you wanted to look at, okay, who are the top lifestyle um, creators, content um, generators, influencers, ambassadors, it will allow you to kind of say, okay, here are the people that would be good. Um, I think with Clear too, um, it actually breaks down into the type of users. So if you want like more nano influencers, you might want to do kind of like the novice kind of people that are coming up. Um, it allows you to kind of see their size, their scope. Are they already connected with the brand? Who else are they connected with? Um, so that would be a place to start off and kind of identify. Um, so that would be the place to go. There are other tools there available. Um, and this is something too, Professor um, Presgrove, I can help out getting connections there. Um, another tool that I like is uh, TalkWalker. And so they actually help out, um, they actually have a whole Influencer One media planning um, program where you actually go from start to finish in an influencer campaign. But they do have a lot of tools that help identify influencers, both from Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Um, and I think they do include blogs and forums as well. So it's very integrated. Um, but I think give, this is such a great assignment that you guys have is because this is something that you will be doing in an internship or job. But if you are able to have a, a complete plan of saying, okay, not only how, this is how we can identify influencers, but here's what we want to do. These are this assignment that you guys are doing this week is so integrated and will put yourself ahead of the game um, because it shows that you have the science and the creativity of understanding the how and why we need to be using influencers, but all how to strategically implement and incorporate it into an overall strategic plan. All right, that is wonderful. Such great insights, yeah. Karen. 
All right, so we talked about this a little bit before yes. we started the video. So the surprise for everyone mm -hmm. is that everybody loves extra credit, mm -hmm. and here's your chance. Karen's gonna give you an extra credit assignment that's worth five points, and there's a place in eCampus where you can drop that extra yep. credit assignment, and you have until the end of next week. Yes. So I'm really excited and definitely take advantage of this um, assignment because it's not only going to be applicable for this class, but it could be something that you could also do in an interview or even share as part of your portfolio. So what I'd like you guys to do is search for Taylor Lawrence. Um, her um, last name is L-O-R-E-N-Z. She writes for The Atlantic. Um, pick out three of her articles that she talks about influencer marketing, and I want you to... Um, basically answer the question, what is the future of influencer marketing and how we need to be prepared and diligent to make sure that we are practicing ethically. So I want you to kind of look at her um, articles and see what are the best practices and where the uh, future profession um, is going. That is perfect. So I'm so excited that we had this time with Karen today. I hope you learned a lot. I know I really got some great insights for how to help and guide you in making a great influencer marketing plan that you can proudly put in your portfolio. Um, so be sure to get that extra credit assignment in by the end of next week. Hyperlink those three sources in your post. It should be at least a few paragraphs long, probably a page. And if you have any questions, as always, reach out. Look forward to hearing from you guys and seeing your assignments. Thanks. Bye, Karen. Bye, guys. Good luck.